women women and men are different in a lot of fundamental ways and one of the ways that they're different is if you give women a social weapon women will use the social weapon for the things that are important to them as a woman and not the way men will use it where they'll be like well i have no right to claim this for the most part and if if a man claims this when it's not true then you know other men will ostracize him for it and he'll lose his standing with with he, he will worry that other men will ostracize him for it so the idea is women will falsely accuse men of rape because for various reasons for attention for to get out of responsibility for things men will women will do all sorts of things that aren't really on the horizons of men because men and women have had very different selective backgrounds over the last 10,000 years which brings up my other most frequently posted image on on my uh, on my Twitter page which have you seen this one the uh, the survival rates of mitochondrial DNA versus Y chromosomes over the last 10,000 to 10,000 years to present and there is a giant dip in the last 10,000 years where one in 17, where, where the ratio of surviving Y chromosomes to mitochondrial DNA is 17 to 1. So for every mitochondrial DNA that survived, so every 17 of them, only one Y chromosome made it, meaning you had men forming cooperative war bands to conquer the women of another tribe and take those women in, take those women in. And for the most part, almost all women survived. So women have a lot more older cognitive adaptations and men have a whole bunch of new stuff that was sort of implanted in them and, and, and concepts that were needed to cooperate successfully for war bands is, is the fundamental difference, I think, in the mentality between men and women. Yeah. I think the, the kind of the, the difference here that I, I felt it's, is I, I agree in the sense that, you know, there's, there are huge differences between men and women. I think this, you know, these are these are some of them, but I do feel like a, a lot of men recently have slid into uh, kind of female patterns of conflict, female patterns of, of behavior. So, like for oh, example, yeah. if you just uh, you know instantly institute um, you know the fifty fourth clause, uh, I would be surprised if uh, the same um, Im implied um, codes of honor the same the women. same the same flaws the same flaws don't show up in both yeah. I think you're right, because I think that feminine models of conflict, they're inherent to women in modern society for a similar convergent evolution reasons, like the way things evolve in nature to to become like crabs. Because you have a society, and once your society wins against the competing societies on the outside of it, everything then becomes about power conflicts within a society. And that's sort of the same thing that women live, have lived with always and sort of shaped their cognition. Like women are always, women always know that if, if the tribe over the next hill comes over and conquers us, the women that she's dealing with now, she's going to be dealing with forever. She's going to be dealing with them for the rest of her life. But the men know that if they don't cooperate, they can still get, they can get conquered by the tribe over the hill. But if you have conquered the known world, then all of a sudden you can kind of defect on the other men in your tribe and you can play the same types of games that women play with each other. You play that with men. And that's sort of how you have like our society, the United States right now is so strong because of the, the results of being on an isolated continent, the only a, a completely safe continent with fish as our, as our neighbors to the East and West where no threat to invade us at all. So what happened is we've reached we reached such incredible amounts of strength that everyone in the world is trivial to the to, to people and and the entire society can focus on infighting and it takes a long time to break down the cooperative bands because you see the United States was able to form a war machine as of World War II so it had cooperative bands but all of that breaks down over time because it's much easier to defect on the group. You lose your asabiyaya. I don't know how to pronounce the word. You, you know the word, right? Yeah, asabiyya, I think. Asabiyya. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's one of the words that I, that I, that I really speak out loud. Asabiyya. Yeah, you lose your asabiyya because 
why should you sacrifice for the tribe when you don't have to worry about the tribe losing to an outside force? The tribe is secure, so you might as well fight for power within the tribe. And then eventually that happens, and that's, that becomes such a dominant mode that eventually the barbarians beat you. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I have a kind of a similar view on this, um, kind of from, from a different perspective. I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of um, the commentary on this is that, okay, there was a moment where we collectively decided that women should have more rights, they should have equal rights to men, and the uh, kind of the theory preceded the reality, and it was just kind of a, you know, a stroke of a pen, and, you know, the, the deal was done. But I feel like a, a lot of this is only possible because, um, certain, you know, material, historical and technological changes allowed us to even be able to ask that question. Like, like you said, we not only won the contest among nations or among, you know, the, the tribes outside, mm-hmm. but also against hunger, against, you know, the, the problem of shelter, the, you know, the, the problems that were just so acute that you couldn't even negotiate with concepts like patriarchy. These are were social technologies that were so essential for you n- not descending into total chaos the next yeah. day that, you know, the, the second all of these pressures were lifted, then it was almost natural that, you know, each, each person now is an individual. We can, you know, satisfy wants and desires and, you know, each, each person has wants and desires and why not just, uh, you know, all participate in the fulfillment of each other's wants and desires. So kind of, this is kind of a, a runaway thing that happens once you take the lid off of nature you know, of, of nature's red and tooth and claw off of the society, these things tend to bubble up. So, um, I just don't see how, you know, that's also my, my question. Cause I've kind of uh, placed restrictions on myself seeing, see, I, seeing at least a, a, a part of this in my own life and seeing what, you know, unrestricted individualism does to me and to the people around me. I've kind of put, you know, boundaries on myself, but doing this at a collective level, um, it seems to be very kind of LARPy in a way. It feels like, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. What do you make of this? Well, all right. So the classical thing is, I mean, all right, just just factual matter. Y- you, your own appearance, your, your, your massive growth on Twitter is because you are a stunningly beautiful woman. Every man, I mean, it's true. You know, I mean, you know you are, Jeez. right? You're tall. You're blonde. You've got blue eyes. Every feature about you is is arresting, and no man, no no man with any sort of no man who's who doesn't consume soy all the time isn't going to be massively distracted by that and and want to pay attention to you. Which says that naturally, if there aren't these collective restrictions, women wield a massive amount of social power. And if you don't have if you don't have a natural world that sort of tamps that down, they will wield that social power in ways that are that's destructive to themselves. Like, you know, not a lot of men out there are. You know, you you watch a you you watch a thing about like a rock star who completely loses it because he has you know he has access to to you know, all the Coke and all the Coke that he wants and gets it walk into walk into any nightclub and any women, any woman is at his beck and call. And that's literally the experience of a pretty girl starting at the age of 16, right? Every single girl is basically the equivalent of that. Like the top ones are are get more get more out of that. But you know, you're 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 sort of given these gifts that naturally so that you can find not, you know, I want to say so that you can entice a husband to that naturally in the past you would have needed to take care of you and to provide for you during famine times, blah, 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 blah. But in a world where you don't really have to do that, and and this I think is the big difference. This I think is a sort of a difference between whites and Asians, is is I think, you know, there's there's the broad group. East Asians, I think, are a lot more famine adapted, and I think their women are a lot more sort of uh pragmatic about this kind of stuff like they're they're sort of like they're like yeah who's going to take care of who's going to take care of the kids that i have and and european women are much more i think we've had a little bit more of a like a thunderdome past they're just like yeah i i want to have i want to have a i want to have a sexy man i think it's much more you're much more a euro women trait than a than an east asian women trait but you know and then and then africa is its own own thing entirely because they can provide their own food but Socially, 
women have massive amounts of power unless you unless you have a, a, a collective agreement not to do that. Because the incentives for individual men to defect on that and to, you know, to white knight for women are so huge because attention from women feels good. That's how we're made. Right? <laughs>